Shout it loud, hallelujah. If you know that the Lord is going to visit you today, shout it loud, there's hallelujah. Right there where you are, beloved, just sing this song loud and clear. Believe in the Lord for His touch upon your life at this particular edition of the Power Must Change Us. Thank you, Jesus. Power must change us in my life. No matter what that devil may say. Power must change us in my life. No matter what that devil may say. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
I say there is no other, there is no other God. Promise to rest, no other God. From north to south, I say there is no other God. There's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There will never be any like it. There is no one, there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There is no one, there's no one, there's no one like him. There is no one, there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There will never be, there will never be any like him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There is no one, there's no one, there's no one like him. There is no one, there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There will never be, there will never be any like him. Say, I walk, I walk, I no one, no one. I search then search, say, no one, no one. I look around, oh yeah, no one, there will never be, there will never be any like him. Jesus, oh yeah, ne me ma kibo, na niki gara ni me alamo churu kolata. Hey Jesus, oh yeah, ne me ma kibo, na niki gara ni me alamo churu kolata. Hey Jesus, oh yeah, ne me ma kibo, na niki gara ni me alamo churu kolata. Jesus, oh yeah, ne me ma kibo, na niki gara ni me alamo churu kolata. Oh, 
Silence, beloved. Now you want to go into a period of what you call surgical prayers. Don't say, I don't think it concerns me. You never can tell. Please, pray with the spirit of enough is enough. Pray with the spirit of the mad prophet. Pray like a man or woman from another world. Because the prayer you are about to pray now will not only save your time, save your money, but save your health. So pray it very well. Immediately you begin to say those prayers. The surgical angels that have been dispatched to follow this program will begin immediate work. There are people gathered there or listening to the sound of my voice now. And your head is not your head. It's been exchanged. As this prayer goes on, you will feel the fire upon that head. There are people hearing me. You have been hearing strange voices. Mobile infirmity that have been moving about in your body. They have given you a terrible clinical prophecy. They have told you you must live with this. It is time for you to say no. There are people here. It's like every night you are under concert attack. And when you wake up you are not understanding what is happening to you anymore. As these prayers go on, you may feel funny. You may feel dizzy. Don't worry. 
it is time for the arrows to go back to the senders. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? By the power in the blood of Jesus, I chase every infirmity out of my body. Can I hear you shouting that? Can I hear the sisters shouting it? Can I hear the brothers shouting the same thing? When you say that once, you now convert it to machine gun prayers. I chase you out. I chase you out. I chase you out. I chase you out. And don't stop till I stop you. By the power in the blood of Jesus, I chase every infirmity out of my body. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and decree it. Chase them out. Aha, 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 aha. Chase them out. In Jesus' name we pray. Aha, see what is happening now. I told you. See what is happening now. Aha. That's an organ change taking place. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. That's the power of God coming upon you. So every garment of infirmity. Shout it with only anger. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Set it ablaze by the power of the God of Elijah. Set it ablaze. Set it ablaze. Set it ablaze. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to count seven from here. Seven women are going to fall into labor as if they are about to deliver a baby. And then the plantation of the spirit husband disturbing their womb will jump out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Happen as the first woman. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. That's number five. That's number six. That's number seven. Push it out. Say, I drink the blood of Jesus and I pass out from my body every demon of infirmity. I drink the blood of Jesus and I pass out of my body every demon of infirmity. Can you shout that one time? Amen. Begin to do so prophetically now. Begin to drink the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and drink that blood. Drink the blood of Jesus. Drink the blood of Jesus. Drink the blood of Jesus. Yes. And pass out from your body. Every demon of infirmity. See what is happening over there? Yes. Yes, yes. Amen. Lay your hands on your stomach now. Don't negotiate with the enemy. 
We are not here for negotiation. Say anything that I have eaten or swallowed assigned to attack my health. Can I hear you shouting that loud? Let your voice be louder than that. In the name of Jesus. Anything I've eaten or swallowed assigned to attack my health die in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Get us a bread. We're going to come seven. Smite your stomach. One. The serpent is in trouble. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Stretch your right hand towards this altar now. Father, let his hands that stretch forward here become the hands of healing and deliverance. As many as we smite any infirmity here today, they shall not hear about the infirmity anymore. In the name of Jesus, I soak your hands in the blood of Jesus. I soak your hands in the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Get us separate. Anywhere you are having pain or infirmity in your body, smite it 21 fold. And shout, go back to your senders. Let's go. Jesus. Mapotasetelika. Amen. Check your body now. Check it very well. Do what you could not do before. If you can't walk, walk. If you can't bend, bend. If you cannot see, see. If you have anything in your body that they say it's an agent of death, touch it now. Thank you, Jesus. See the wave of the power of God. Moving, moving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right there where you are, pick any song of praises in your mouth and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Any song of praises. How great is our God. How great is His name. How great is His love. Forever the same. We roll back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And you said, I never leave you. When you trust in me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I have a word for three persons here. The Lord said, I should tell somebody that you are about to love all your enemies to scorn. The Lord said, I should tell somebody that they have been threatening to cut you short. But that the sword of heaven that will cut them short has started. And you over there, although you are a bit discouraged, but hear this word from heaven, beginning from now, no man shall say unto you again, where is your God? For your God shall arise and manifest. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. A louder amen. amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Now listen to this announcement very, very carefully. Next Palm of Changes in July is the Water of Fire program. But this one is different. This is why I'm telling you well in advance. Because each person must be armed with at least three bottles of water. The first one, make it the capacity that you can finish drinking here. So, one bottle, you drink that air. The whole bottle, nothing left. Drink the whole bottle. Second bottle is for environmental sanitation. Amen. You go and pour that in your environment. The third bottle is the one you keep and top up and use regularly. So, three bottles. Your friends that are inviting, tell them it's three bottles. That is the instruction. And they should make one bottle the size they can finish drinking here. Don't bring a giant 10 liter bottle you can't finish drinking here. Then the one you want to keep, if you like, you can bring a gallon. If you understand me, shout hallelujah. Now listen very carefully. Some people may find my topic today very offensive. You may find it offensive because I want to ensure that you do not forget it. I will give you an alternative in case you don't like my offensive title. What you are looking at this one is called the penis dowry. Or if you like, foreskin dowry. If you like, reproductive organ dowry. But I call it penis dowry. In First Samuel chapter 18, verse 25. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 25. If you are there, say yes. Here was a beautiful woman, the daughter of a king. The king wanted to marry her to an important fellow. And that king now decided on a form of dowry. Let us see the diary that was received for this lady. And let us see what happened to the lady later. Let us examine carefully what happened to the marriage where this kind of dowry was used. In First Samuel chapter 18, verse 25. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desired not any dowry, but an hundred false king of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. Because there is no way you are going to cut off the penis of a soldier without killing him first. So Saul thought that, well, if I ask him to bring this kind of dowry, hundred first kings of the enemy, by the time he kills the first one, second one, third one, someone, one of them will kill him. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David, well, to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose, and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men, instead of the hundred they even asked for. They doubled the dowry for this lady. And David brought their first kings and they gave them in full tale to the king that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, to one. That was how this lady got married. That was the dowry that was collected. Listen, beloved. There is something known as the evil harvest. There is something known as generational harvest. There is something in deliverance they call root enemies. Enemies at the root. There is something known as foundational warfare. There is something known as harrows from the foundation. There is something known as foundational cry. There is something known as foundational voices. There is something known as foundational marching order. Listen and listen to me very carefully, beloved. In this life, the foundation of anything you do is very crucial. There is foundation to every wealth. The foundation of that wealth must be right. If it's not right, you will definitely pay for it and your children's children. I feel sorry for all those looking for wealth in magic, sorcery, kidnapping. They would do nothing with that wealth. The wealth would destroy them and their children. Those who have done so in the past have done nothing with such monies. I feel sorry for those who are trafficking drugs. If that is the foundation of the wealth you claim to have, 
you are a great pauper. Only that you didn't know. Because what you have done, the foundation you have laid, will certainly backfire. Academics must have a good foundation. If you got into the university, got to anywhere with a fake certificate, the foundation is already wrong. I uh, saw so you are carrying a fake passport. Anywhere you go with it, your staying in that place is already faulty. Sometimes all these people waste the time of pastors, prophets, and deliverance ministers. Because they, 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 have, they, have, they have a bad foundation and they are looking for somebody to treat the plant that has grown out of the bad foundation. Are you running a business? The foundation of that business must be good. If it's terrible, if it's bad, if it's in occultism, sacrifices of this, sacrifices of that, stealing from here, stealing from there, we are not going anywhere with that. It will backfire. It will not only kill you physically, spiritually, but will start killing your offsprings. The foundation of the marriage of Michal was first king of Philistines, death of Philistines. You are having a ministry, a church, the foundation of it must be solid. Listen and listen to me well, no matter what you think you know. Any church you start on the foundation of rebellion, disloyalty, stealing will not last. Because the foundation is wrong. You may run for a while, 10 years, even 20 years. It's like you have unplugged a present iron from the electricity. It will still be hot for a while. But the cold period will come. When the mad winds of anti-ministry power comes against you. And your foundation is faulty. Fall flat. This is why we have so many churches, but only a few are doing very well. Many have started in rebellion. But it doesn't say they cannot preach Christ. For the Bible says, some preach Christ out of strife. Some preach Christ out of contention. But it doesn't matter as far as Christ is preached. They are just like bus conductors who will not enter into the world. Family. The foundation of family is very important. The way you find your husband, the way you find your wife. If you are in a home now, you just pack your load and move in. No dowry. No engagement. No family. You just say, I love you, I love you, and because of the love, that you say you have love in court, you moved in. The foundation of that marriage is already in trouble. So going to deliverance and to start praying, 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 you're wasting the time of the deliverance ministers. The foundation of any relationship you have is important. One man met his wife. He went to a native doctor. As he was coming out, he met the woman going to the native doctor. So they met in the front of the native doctor's house. And they started loving themselves in court from that place. So the man married this woman whom he met at the door of the witch doctor's house. Ten years later, he ran to Christ, claiming that the wife is a witch. And I told him, what do you expect? You picked that up from the witch doctor's house. So you expect her to be an angel? He said, No. Say, man of God, does it doesn't mean there is nothing I can do? There is a way out. Deliverance. And God's mercy. I was in England for my PhD in the early 80s. A friend of mine came to my house. I said, Daniel, I'm expecting my wife tomorrow. Will you follow me to the airport to welcome my wife? I said, that's fine. I was free. So I followed him. And so we went to Gatwick Airport. And we stayed there. The place was lifeless to start with. But immediately the Nigerian plane arrived. Those who were sleeping woke up. And then we were waiting for them at the arrival. And people were coming from Nigeria. And uh, I, was, I was asking my friend, where is she? So said, wait, wait, wait. He put his hand in his pocket and brought out a picture. And he was looking at those who were coming. And the picture... I said, ah, you mean, you mean, you have never met her? I said, no. I said, they, they posted that to me. I said, okay. So we waited and waited. And we were even going to give up. When we saw this lady, lighting complexion coming, we looked at the picture, looked at her face, looked at the picture. 
Look at her face. She shouted her name. So yes, they embraced each other. That was how they met at the airport. Arrival hall. With a picture. Six months later. I went to my husband, friend's house. Because somebody called me and said, I said, my guess I should come. My friend found his way to the roof. I said, what are you doing there? He said, he wants to commit suicide. He wants to jump down. I said, ah. Well. I said, why? He said, my wife. I said, which wife? He said, the one we went to collect at the airport. I said, yes. Anything wrong with her? I said, no. I said, she has followed one German man. She ran away. I said, so because of that, you want to die? She's gone. What do you expect? You collected her at the airport. Now she flew away again. You know, the Yorubas have a proverb. Uh, the wife you marry in the dancing hall will disappear through the same entertainment. That is a proverb in our land. They say it is what the bird has eaten that the bird will fly with. It is when the bird has not eaten something bad. If the bird has eaten above what the bird you eat, it won't fly. So you have a, you have a building, you are living in a house. It has a foundation. Sometimes people plant things in the foundation of a house. And people who live there never prosper. We went to a place. It was in England. And we were looking at a house. The woman next, the next door neighbor thought we wanted to buy the house. She came out. I said, come, come, come. I said, uh, we, so we went. I said, I hope you are not trying to buy this house. He said, no. I just said, uh, admiring it. He said, if you are planning to buy it, don't buy it. Because two former occupants died of heart attack. She had just told us the secret of the place. I'm praying for somebody here this morning. If you are living in a place where the foundation is attacking your destiny, May the Lord relocate you to a better place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sex as a foundation. Your sexual foundation is important to your life. The man who disverges a lady has a serious spiritual implication to that lady. Because you form a covenant with that man. He has broken into you and wetted his organ with your blood. So a blood covenant is formed. This is why we preach that there must, there must not be sex before marriage. It pollutes every other thing. Unless you atone for it and pray about it. Employment as foundation. Certificate as foundation. Even your Christianity as a Christian. It has a foundation. If you get born again where there is no sound Bible doctrine, all they do is to dance, no sound Bible teaching, no sound Bible culture, no doctrinal standards, no fear of God, no baptism of the Holy Spirit, no culture of prayer. That is how you, the foundation from which you get born again. It will breed Christians that are easily defeated by the enemy and Christians who do not fear God. It is important that you understand what I'm saying now. Every country too has a foundation. That's why in territorial deliverance we do spiritual mapping. This is a very, very serious matter. All the abortions that are done as blood crying against those who do it. And some have been suffering from that. If God has sent a prophet to earth to come and deliver people and you aborted the prophet in your womb, the blood of all those the prophet is coming to save comes upon you. And if you don't atone for it or call upon God to help you, it will fight you. Deliverance will not help. Foundation. What is the foundation of the marriage between David and Michal? What, what gave Michal so much problem and headache? Look at Second Samuel chapter 6. Second Samuel chapter 6 verse 23. Look at the result of the Penis dowry. 200 reproductive organs of men were cut off to marry her. Result. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 23. Therefore, Mitchell, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. The foundation. 
unlike other women in the Bible who were claimed to be barren, but who eventually had uncommon children. Michal died like that. Her father used her as a trap to kill David, which was deception. Her father collected a strange dowry, which has now brought strange problems. They killed 200 men. Blood was in the foundation of that marriage. Dowry was 100 foreskin of the Philistines, cutting off people's reproductive organs. And so the repercussion is that our own reproduction too was cut off. Foundation. I want to pray one prayer now. As many as want to key into it. Don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours. Father, I'm praying for as many people as are here. That any satanic voice from their foundation will be silenced forever in the name of Jesus. I'm praying a second prayer. Anyone here suffering because of the sins of their parents, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let our Emma roar like thunder. Sit down for a little bit more. So, foundation determines durability. Determines how long something can last. It determines stability. It determines progress. It determines how good you can stand during the mad winds of life. It determines how positive an impact you can make. It determines your generational blessings. But most importantly, it determines your harvest. It determines your harvest. It determines your harvest. God gives allocation. Anything extra that you get outside that divine allocation will bring you trouble and tough consequences. The Bible says a man shall receive nothing except he be given from above. Listen to me very well. God has given you an allocation of the amount of sugar you can eat till you die. Once you exceed that allocation, problem starts. God has given allocation of the amount of fat you can eat. Once you eat over it, trouble will come. Even ordinary human body, God has allocated the amount of water you can put inside. If we exceed the water allocation, or even this vitamin, you exceed the amount of vitamin that body needs, your body reacts madly. God has given you the allocation of the number of sex you should have till you die. Once you have exceeded that allocation, any extra one you do, you're just putting yourself into trouble. I feel sorry for some young ladies now. By 18, they have exceeded all their allocation. They've used everything up. No credit again. Now, any one they now do after that one is just extra allocation and extra trouble. This is a problem. Some men, you've exceeded your allocation while you were in secondary school. And so you've exceeded it. After exceeding it, now you now got married. Now there is a problem. That doctors cannot solve, deliverance cannot solve. There is a limit to the talking you can do. Once you have exceeded the allocation of your talking, the extra you say will only give you problems. These are principles people don't understand. I has landed people in hospital on deliverance ground, going to different prophets all over the place. You can run elta scatter to any prophet. If your problem is an evil harvest, no prophet can help you unless you go back to God. The Bible says, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sweat, he shall reap also. It's, it's basic. See, you can nobody let, let nobody deceive you. Somebody can preach another message to you. He said, God is not mocked. He said, whatsoever you do. That's Galatians chapter 6. He said, whatsoever a man does, you will repeat. There will always be a harvest. Just like you saw the harvest that Michal received. The grinding machine of God grinds very slowly. But the grind exceedingly small. Whether we like it or not, retribution will have a day. Although the flight of that retribution may be slow. You will eventually do to yourself what you have done to others. 
Nothing in this world is determined by empty talk. Anyone swallowing poison must die. Unless you stop the poison from working. As your action, so is your recompense. And ashes fly back to the faces of those who throw them. Bad actions may not at once produce its fruit. But it will cut off the root of evil committed. The Bible says because the judgment against evil act is not speedily done. So the art of man is strong to do evil. When we say, I don't do what you are doing. But that person has done it, is prospering. That person has done it, is prospering. That person has done it, is prospering. Why should I not do it? The Bible says, because the judgment against evil act is not speedily done. Because God is giving them room to repent. So the heart of man is strong to do evil. A teacher, biology teacher, got one of the students in class pregnant. The guy was 16. He got the guy pregnant. He denied the pregnancy. Threw the guy's life into this area. Whereas, he too was married. Four children. He had forgotten the life that he had wasted. But he married a strange woman. It's part of the repercussion. One day, his wife found that he was going out with other women. At that time, the man was 57 years old. With four children who are quite young. This wife did something that I have not seen anybody do before. She got so angry because the man was unfaithful. She took her children to the river. Threw them in one by one. Killed all of them. Finish. So let him start from the scratch. The man cried. But he did not remember. That many, many years back. When he was teaching biology. He had messed up one life. There are people like that who have messed up lives. They now run to deliverance ground. They run to prophets. But they will not tell the prophet what they've done wrong. Sometimes they make the prophet to start sweating and praying. And unless you are a good prophet, you may not find out until that the person you are fighting is God, not the devil. The net of heaven is cast wide. And it has large holes. But yet, nothing can slip through it. There is no place on earth to escape to. To run away from the consequences of evil deed. As you plan evil for another person, heaven is planning evil for you too. Every minute, every hour, you are sowing something. In words, in thoughts, indeed. And there is a reaping coming. A reaping is coming your way for what you have sown. The evil that a man does will eventually go back to him. As long as we have the sun and the moon and the stars. Whether you are a sinner or a saint, you will reap what you have sown. Many are suffering now because of what they have sown in the past which has caught them unawares. Ye ask do not dilute what I'm saying now. Ye ask do not dilute the Lord, they strengthen it. Whether you believe this law or not is irrelevant. There is an evil harvest waiting for every evil deed we are doing, whether great or small. I'd like you to watch all those who are responsible for the woes and troubles of Nigeria and see what will happen to them. If you cheat, somebody too will cheat you. If you backbite, somebody will backbite against you. If you cause confusion in people's lives, they will cause confusion in your own life too. If you stab people at the back, they will stab you at the back. If you steal money, they will steal your money. So you are digging a pit for your fellow man, you might as well dig too. Because it's a matter of time before you fall into it yourself. Oh, so you are stealing people's wife, you are stealing people's husband. Oh, you will pay heavily for it. Because you say, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man swear, that he shall reap. Children who are here, hear me and hear me very well. The way you treat your parents, is how your own children will treat you. The way you disrespect your elders. You are disrespecting your elders now. Don't worry. Your own result is approaching. Someone will duplicate the same actions against you. And listen very well, beloved. We might lose some of our records on earth, but God keeps his own records. We might burn down buildings because we want to hide our iniquity, but God's record cannot be burned. Reminds me of the song we sing in our old primary school. The teachers, very useful songs in those days. One of them they sang here this morning. Wherever you go, wherever you be, don't say yes when you mean to say no. They also taught us in our school in those days. God sees all you do. He hears all you say. My Lord is writing all the time. Everything you do, you say, is writing it. David killed another woman's husband. 
He thought he was covered. But no. As far as God is concerned, you might have killed a Goliath. Your powerful music might have driven out on clean spirits. But you must reap what you sow. And David did. That man you slept with outside marriage, you will reap the result. The woman you are sleeping with outside marriage may be the result of the low spam count that are stamping on you now. That pregnancy will terminate to hide shame. May be the reason your certificate is getting you no job now. That sex before marriage may be the reason why that marriage has not worked. This is a very serious matter. Every sin has a day of visitation. The day may come after many years. You may get away from the law because you hired a very good lawyer. But you will still appear at the judgment seat of Christ. Today is the father of tomorrow. Every person is a sower. You will reap the harvest of your planting. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. But many people are living careless life, indulgent lifestyle. Say, when I want to change, I will change. I want to change. I will just change like that. No, you are sowing something. The repercussion will tell. I'm saying all this. So you don't just pray empty prayers. I'm saying all this. So you won't be wondering, what, what did I do wrong? What's happening to me? There is only two way out. Two way out. Number one, you need to become a friend of God. Two, you need to connect to what the Bible calls divine mercy. Say, I will have mercy on those from whom I will have mercy. It is to that mercy I want you to connect this day. It's for you to be able to pray that prayer of blind Bartimaeus. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet, you will know that you are praying that prayer. Say, so, Lord, have mercy of me, mercy. It's only mercy that can deliver. But the first thing before you are even qualified for that mercy. So surrender your life to Jesus. Close your eyes where you are, beloved. If you are here this morning, say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, why all eyes are closed. Please rise to your feet. Run quickly to the altar here. Or any of the two altars at the back. Don't hesitate. Today is a day of deliverance, a day of power. Say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Rise up from that feet and run quickly to this altar. Or any of the two altars at the back. Jesus is waiting for you here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Find a way to this altar very quickly. On the way to Calvary, He went for me. On the way to Calvary, He went for me. He died to set me free. All the way to Calvary, Jesus went for me. Yes, you went for me. Yes, you went for me. Just all the way to Calvary, Lord, you went for me. Yes, you of you at the altar, I congratulate you. 
Just bow down your head. Say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children. We have surrendered their lives to Jesus today. Father, keep them standing by your power. Lay your hands upon their lives. Anoint them by your power. Today that they have surrendered their lives to Jesus, then their lives no longer remain the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. The rest of us, let's bow down our heads. Thank the Lord to forgive you of any foundational iniquity that is assigned to trouble your destiny. Talk to the Lord now. Take my life and let it be consecrated blood to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them fall in ceaseless grace. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, 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 feed me till I want no more. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them fly. In ceaseless days Open now the crystal fountain Whence the healing stream doth flow Let the fair and cloudy pillar Lead me all my journey through Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield, be thou strength and strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield, be thou still my strength and shield, be thou still my strength and shield, be thou still my strength and shield. Take my Lord, my Lord, I pour at thy feet he treasures store. Take myself and I will be Tread the verge of children, bid my angels face of sight, bear me through 
the swelling current Grant me safe on Canaan's side Songs of praises, songs of praises I will ever give to thee, I will ever give to thee give to thee, I will ever give to thee, I will ever give to thee, I will ever give to thee. Take my life and let it be consecrated. Lord, to Thee, take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless Let's rise to our feet, please. As many as who call upon the Lord here today, in these simple, simple prayers, the Lord will meet them at the point of their need. The first prayer I want you to pray with no compromise. Please, it's important that nobody's voice is louder than yours. Please pray it from your heart. Any problem... In my life Because of the sins of my parents Can I hear you shouting that loud? Let your voice be louder than that In the name of Jesus In Jesus' name we pray. Now there is this threefold prayer. We need to pray it three times. Jesus asked Peter three times, Love us, thou me, and all this. So you know, Lord, that I love you. He asked Peter again the second time, Love us, thou me, and all this. So Lord, I love you. He asked him a third time, Love us, thou me, and all this. Three full time is when you should pray this prayer. If you pray this prayer and you lose your voice, but you get a breakthrough, you have made a good bargain. But if you keep quiet and you allow the anointing that is upon this place to pass you by, then it won't be my fault. Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Ma kapota setalia. Ribo soponda kaya bo shente rabo kopola ba. In Jesus name we pray. I want you to increase your volume. The angels are already walking. This is the second time. Open your mouth and pray. Have mercy on me. In Jesus name we pray. This is the final time now for the third time. Open your mouth and call upon the God of Elijah. Baporia di Kasentea. Ribo potenda kayabo shanta. Makantenda rabo sopola kayabo shanta. In Jesus 
name we pray. A louder amen. Before we go on with our prayers, we flow with the ministration of the saxophone choir.
Shout hallelujah. Well done. God bless you. Bring out your prayer letter now. Father, we thank you for these prayer letters. Answer by fire. In the name of Jesus. Let every point written in this paper become testimonies in the name of Jesus. You shall rejoice. And you will laugh last over all your enemies. Father, I'm praying for those who are celebrating the birthday in this month of June. I pray that it shall be well with them. You will keep them standing by your power. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes closed. Everybody remain standing. We are continuing our prayers. When someone is being troubled by all these kind of adverse forces, the person will make tragic mistakes, unexplainable error. The purpose and the agenda of that error is to push the person towards the consequences of the evil adverse. And if the person is not stopped from making those errors, it will go into the error and the error will now lead into the evil harvest. The consequences of the evil dowry was already working on Michal. And that was what was pushing her, pushing her, pushing her. Until when David started to praise God, she began to mock David. She was proud because of her beauty and because she's the king's daughter. Because a seed has been sown and it must germinate. Some who have done something really terrible and they must have an evil harvest that they will push them and push them and push them. They will offend those they will not offend who will not issue curses on them. The curses that was issued on them was just to make sure that they reap that harvest. Just like the mockery of David by Mitchell was just to ensure that that evil harvest happens to her. Can you shout this loud and clear? Satanic mistakes. I am not your candidate. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray like that. In Jesus' name we pray. Stolen virtues of my father's house. I possess you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But a certain decay abortion. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord blesses you from Zion. And make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. You will go from strength to strength. And from glory to glory. By this time next month, you'll be a bigger bundle of testimonies. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us share the grace of fellowship.